Hey, let's talk about a, a couple of things here. Let's start with the refugee issue. Uh, the refugee issue worldwide is a huge problem now, uh, not only because of war, but because of climate change. And, you know, we keep thinking about this as a them problem, uh, but it's really a we problem for many reasons. First of all, it's, it's a moral issue. Um, you know, when you go to war, typically you're trying to cover major cities and then from there replace the government and from there essentially extract natural resources, whether they be silver, oil, um, gold, um, or, or something else that you need in order to keep your economic engine going. Um, and then, uh, you know, there's no real, there's no real profit to be made from policing people in different areas. So, um, that are not connected to the, uh, a, a profit making enterprise. Um, and you know, it could, it, it, depending on where the world economy is, the idea would be that, you know, to the extent that someone, especially your neighbor, um, is in a position where they can overtake you. Um, in many cases, historically, what's happened is one that the superior country, uh, in, in, at least in military terms, has invaded, uh, oftentimes on pretext, um, and then essentially occupied the capital city and nearby cities, replaced the government, forced the government, um, the, the, the prior government, to sign a treaty that typically puts that entire country in debt. And that's why you've seen so many wars against smaller countries. Um, and, you know, because it's, it's almost too easy in a time when diplomacy has failed almost worldwide uh, to go in and, and essentially create an extension of your own power uh, economically and in ways that put the uh, target country in debt to you based on your currency. And so w what's really interesting here is that when, when countries do that, they create a refugee problem. Uh, most people don't want to you know, be in a country where the capital government has been replaced by a puppet government, and so they leave. Um, if you're in a so-called superpower country like the United States um, or you know um, the EU or Japan and so on, you may be thinking to yourself, again, this is not my problem. Um, you know, this is, this is another problem for other people. Uh, no one's going to come in and, and take over my country military, no, through military force. But again, it's not just military force that causes refugee issues. It's also, like I said, things that are far more prosaic, economic, economic displacement. Um, you know, you've got a situation where, uh, if, if you think about it, um, you know, if, if there's a severe enough recession, why wouldn't you want to be in a position where you, you can have free movement of labor across borders? Why shouldn't there be a situation where, uh, you know, it's 2008, why shouldn't you be able to move to another country that's growing faster um, and try to get a job in that country without having to jump through so many different hoops? Um, you know, why wouldn't you be able to, you know, essentially just go to another country for six months to two years um, and try to wait and recover um, using your superior currency uh, as a way to get you into a system that allows you an opportunity, a better opportunity uh, to come back at a later point in time um, and try to regenerate your business. Now, Historically, that just hasn't happened. You know, when the United States went to war against Japan, uh, Japanese Americans uh, were put in camps um, and had all their possessions and their, and their property taken away from them. Um, so, it, but we have to remember, you know, we've got other situations where even in Europe, like you know, cities like Venice are projected to be uh, underwater at some point. So it's not just Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, um, Jakarta where the um, where envi the environment simply is having issues keeping up with population growth. Mexico City might be another example 100 years um, or 200 years from now. We just don't know. But we do know that humanity on this planet has taken so many resources simply because capital, capital deployment has focused on you know, creating, making some cities bigger than others, um, typically around ports uh, for trade. Uh, and that's been the system. So the refugee problem is once you look at it as a, a situation or an issue of free movement of people and labor, it's no, it's no longer a them problem, it's an us problem, um, because all of us sh should have the, the sense to want to be able to maximize the opportunity to go to another country, just ourselves or with our families. And if we have the money, why shouldn't we be able to go there if we're not, if we're not going to be a burden on the other country's resources? What is, you know, what is the issue with that? Uh, you can talk about security, uh, sure, but there's a process for having that, and there should be a process uh, that, that everyone can agree on. Um, and right now, we don't have that process. 
And, you know, the reason we don't have that process is, is, is in part because um, job protection is one. A lot of countries simply want to preserve jobs for their own citizens, which is a legitimate goal. Um, but once again, we're talking about a situation where there may be gaps in the labor market. And, and every country has gaps in the labor market. Um, it doesn't matter how affluent you are. Um, you know, you've got, you know, or, or it, it may be that you're so affluent like Norway that you just, you know, citizens don't want to do certain jobs. Um, and so there's always a gap. There's never a country with 100% um, employment. There's always at least two, three, four, and sometimes 5%, uh, even in economically developed cities. So we we keep trying to think about building walls. That's a big issue in America right now, uh, without realizing that, you know, that, that ultimately if you get to the point where you're building a wall, like uh, East Germany or like Israel, what it really means is that you failed on trade and the free movement of people and labor. And because you failed diplomatically, um, you're having to erect all these physical barriers to cover up uh, your abstract failings. And so this is a lesson for politicians and for diplomats. Ultimately, you want your neighbors you know, to be not necessarily equal to you in strength or you know, economic might. You want them, but you want them to constantly be getting better because if you are in a situation where you're just better than all of your neighbors to a massive degree, you create a refugee problem, a, a labor movement problem that can create problems in your own country, no matter how much money you have. Um, and so once again, that that is an example of, you know, a, an opportunity for diplomacy, for seeing the refugee crisis as a, an issue of the free movement of people everywhere. And so we, one of the problems I have as, as an American citizen is that, you know, when I hear my own, the country that I live in talking about walls, it's, it's quite obvious that, um, well, first of all, it's not going to work. There's tunnels. So there's always ways of getting around it. If, if East Germany was unable to keep people in, um, I, it, it's, it's just um, a massive issue. Uh, and it's a massive waste of money. That doesn't mean that we shouldn't, focus on border control. Um, what, what, what we have to be, we just have to be smart about it. And, and part of that is making sure that your neighbor has enough economic opportunity, opportunities to, to, try, to make sure that the incentives are not so misaligned that you're having to do things like build a wall, which of course, you know, is not the end game of the expense. There has to be, you know, the problem again, isn't the wall itself. If, even if you could build a wall, you have to maintain it. That requires essentially an extension of the security state. You have to have patrol members. Think about how big that border is. You can't do it. Even if you have drones, you have to have people that man them, that control them, that, that you know, that basically back up all the footage, all the data um, that can be deployed immediately. So even with technology minimizing the need to have soldiers uh, across the DMZ, like North and South Korea, it's not, a, you know, it's still not cost effective. You know, the, the issue of technology making a security state, you know, easier without, you know, without needing as many people uh, and therefore presumably not as not as much expense. Uh, that's another issue, uh, although I will say that, you know, typically the expenses don't go away. Uh, they just go to, to corporations that are utilizing or deploying that technology uh, in the same way that, say, an IBM would be able to create a punch card system or a tracking system for, say, a, the German government um, or, you know, or some other country. That's just one example, of, you know, that I'm just sort of pulling out of my hat. But somebody has to, you know, when you go to war, when, when you have a security state, the money always has to always has to come from somewhere. Um, so you have to look at these issues as a whole and you have to look at them as failures of diplomacy and failures of economic policy. Uh, so when you get to the point where the wall is being built, what it means is your security state, your police state has taken over and overwhelmed um, all the other functions of government, diplomacy, the economy, uh, corporate growth, sometimes. Um, you know, certainly when you're in a position where your, your tax revenue is being spent to protect and build um, a questionable project for, to, to improve security, something along the line has failed. Uh, and, and part of that is almost always social cohesion. And this, these are the issues that nobody is really talking about today. And part of the, the problem with being an American is there are so many, there are so many distractions everywhere. Um, and so we've gotten to the point where everything you look at, whether it's a newspaper, whether it's a movie, um, it, it's almost always an example where the ego triumphs over um, common sense and context. That's what bothers me uh, a lot about being in this country today. 
Um, and certainly the, the apathy bothers me a great deal. Um, but people, especially the younger generation, you know, have, they, they're faced with going in debt for an education, ten, you know, five figures are faced with a total loss of privacy. Um, and this has been going on since the church committee investigations and in many, many decades ago. And none of them are, you don't see any of them going to jail on a mass scale. You don't see any protests, although they say that, you know, if protests change anything, they'd make them illegal. But you still don't see the kind of rebellious spirit that America has, you know, used to be known for. Uh, that is really the foundational catalyst for a lot of the creativity that's coming out that used to come from this country. Um, and now the question is, where is that spirit going to go? Uh, and given the the globalization given how all these major countries are copying each other um not just in technological terms but in economic terms the question really is is a crisis of the human spirit and that is being manifested in ways that you know somehow convince ourselves that the refugee problem is a them problem and not an us problem